In this video, I will share with you whether research chemicals are safe or dangerous. Research chemicals are basically analogs of popular psychedelics like LSD, MDMA, psilocybin and ketamine. The difference is you can buy these semi-legally from the internet because they are not yet popular enough for them to be banned, at least that is in most countries. I am only going to talk about psychedelics not research chemicals like stimulants or uh, steroids. With these, I'm not sure about the safety because I have not looked into it that deeply. So we are going to talk about things like synthetic cannabinoids and ALD52 and 1CPLSD, 1PLSD. Now, I said that you can buy these chemicals semi-legally. What does it mean? Well, in almost every country of the world, you can legally buy these research chemicals from the internet for chemical purposes only. So you cannot consume them, you cannot legally put them in your mouth. But whether or not anybody cares is a different story. And even then, if these chemicals are not scheduled in your country, you shouldn't get into any legal trouble by taking them. With that said, if the chemicals are scheduled in your country, you cannot even buy them legally. So if you buy 1P LSD from a chemical research company and the drug is scheduled in your country, you are committing a crime. So be careful there. You most definitely would not get arrested for that. It is just likely that the package will not come into your hands. But if you live in Asia or even in some states of the US where the rules around drugs are incredibly strict, I would not buy something that is scheduled in your country. That is something I wouldn't do even if your country has the most liberal laws. Because again, the package will at the very least not come to your hands. Assuming that the chemicals are not scheduled in your country and the chemical company ships uh, the chemicals into your country, then are they physically safe? Well, this greatly depends on the specific drug. Some, I would say, are extremely safe and have almost no harm potential, while some could actually kill you. When it comes to lysergamides like 1P LSD, 1B LSD, ALD52, ALAT, LSZ, all of these are safe. And the reason I believe that, and the reason I'm confident about this, is that these drugs have similar dosages to LSD, similar effects of LSD, and there has not been reported a single death or any physical harm from these chemicals. And while it is true that there are no studies on these specific chemicals, many, many people have taken them in the past. So we have access to a huge amount of trip reports from which it is certain that these chemicals, these lysergamides are safe. And if you need a scientific proof on the safety of these research chemicals, we don't have that and we may not ever have that, but what we do know from scientific uh, research is that these chemicals produce exact same effects on your receptors and on your system. So LSD targets exactly the same receptors as ALD52 for example. ALAD and all the other LADs are a bit different when it comes to how they react to your brain, but these might actually be even safer. Just like with LSD, they don't seem to show any harm physically, but when it comes to preventing bad trips, ALAD is safer because it doesn't allow you to face your traumas, which is a good thing and a bad thing depending on how you look at it. With lysergamides, one exception to all of that is LSM-775. I discourage taking this drug, not because it is unsafe, I don't know about that, it's just that we don't know, there is not much research on it and people report that LSM is something between LSD and DXM, which could be dangerous. LSM probably is safe as well though, but I am not as confident about that. And it is a hard drug to get anyway. APLA and MIPLA also may not be as safe as other lysergamides. As we move to synthetic cannabinoids, that is something I would definitely stay away from. Now, of course, there are many types of synthetic cannabinoids, but unfortunately, the safest ones have already been banned. And what we are left with are synthetic cannabinoids that not only are incredibly addictive, both physically and psychologically, but unlike marijuana, they can actually kill you. I didn't know this until recently, but apparently most marijuana that you buy on the street is basically some cheap marijuana from Africa 
laced with synthetic cannabinoids. And this fact, I believe, is responsible for most of the bad effects of marijuana. From all the research that I've done, I do not believe that actual marijuana is physically addictive and I do not think it has any physical dangers associated with it. And yet, there are so many people that experience marijuana withdrawals or even physical damage. And I truly believe that synthetic cannabinoids are to blame and I would definitely stay away from them. They are most likely not worth it. I also encourage you to stay away from the NBO Me family as well as the NBO H family. This drug is comparable to LSD. It usually is sold on a blotter, but unlike LSD, NBO Me's and NBO H's are physically dangerous. They have been connected to multiple deaths already, even when they have not been combined with SSRIs or alcohol, and as little as two taps could kill you. The problem is that NBO Me's and NBO H's are easier to synthesize and also cheaper to synthesize than LSD and other lysergamides, which means that dealers may sometimes sell you NBO Me's and tell you that it is LSD. The way you know it is not NBO Mies is by testing your substance. It is easy and you can do so with a research kit that I will link in the description. But if for whatever reason you don't wanna, you are not willing to test your substance, at least watch the taste. If the taste of the blotter you put on your tongue is very bitter and metallic, spit it out. It's probably, it's most definitely NBO me. By the way, if you are from America, I want to add something to Lysergamides. Even if something like 1CP LSD or F flat is not scheduled in your country, you still want to be aware of the legality because of something called the Federal Analog Act. This act bans all substances that are structurally similar to banned substances. And since LSD is illegal in America and ALAD has recently been added as well, you probably are committing a crime by taking these substances. And I cannot promise that the government will let you be. Then there are research chemicals that are structurally similar to ketamine. Specifically, the three most common ones are OPCE, 2-F-DCK and DCK. These research chemicals are not yet that well studied and might never be. And since ketamine itself already has some long-term side effects like neurotoxicity, especially if you take it on a regular basis, and also some potential for physical harm, I would stay away from these chemicals. In general, I'm not a big fan of ketamine. I don't think it is worth it unless you are battling with severe depression. Is it better than SSRIs? Sure, but you also may not need it. So I, as a healthy person, would not buy these chemicals. The same goes for PCP analogs, like free meo PCP. But with PCP, I don't find this drug to be worth it for the vast majority of people. Does it have some benefits? Sure, but I wouldn't even try it, to be honest. As a side note, many people from the psychedelic community believe that most psychedelics are good for you. I definitely do not agree with that. Some of these substances, like PCP, I know that it's a dissociative, but that one actually is incredibly addictive and has a lot of potential for harm. It could actually kill you. So I would say no to free meo PCP and other analogs. But if you are gonna take them, then the safety profile is actually almost identical to regular PCP. Then there are drugs similar to MDMA. Two most common examples are 5-APB and 6-APB. What is great about these, in opposed to taking regular MDMA, is that with 5-APB and 6-APB, you kind of know what you are taking, whereas with MDMA, it is notoriously impure. But if I knew that my MDMA is pure, I would much rather take that than 5-APB or 6-APB, because these research chemicals are more similar to MDA and MDA seems to be way more neurotoxic than MDMA. What I want to leave you with is do not be a guinea pig. Do not test substances 
where you are not sure if they are safe or not. With most of the chemicals that I mentioned, so many people have taken them that we kind of know about their safety. But if you are taking beta hydroxy ABC785 that no one has ever tried before, be really careful. I would not take that at all. You just cannot know whether or not the drug is safe. And not only may you harm yourself, but also this psychedelic movement. Because if you die after taking this ABC 785, you can be sure that the society is gonna find out and they are gonna blame psychedelics in general. So thank you for being responsible. I love you so much and share this video if you found it helpful.